to talk a little bit about CRIF SPC. Uh, we were formerly known as the Caribbean Catastrophe Risk Insurance Facility, um, but we now have, or have had a name change for a little while. Um, so just in a few words, some of you may not be familiar with CRIF, and I hope some of you are already familiar with CRIF. So we began in 2007. So it was prompted really by the hurricane to, uh, in 2004, Hurricane Ivan, which ravaged the region in that year. And Caribbean governments approached the World Bank for assistance in setting up some kind of mechanism that would help the governments in the region. So CRIF is the world's first multi-country, multi-peril risk pool, and it's based on parametric insurance. And I'll say just two words on that um, a little bit later on. So it was originally designed to limit the financial impact of tropical cyclones and earthquakes. We have expanded beyond those two to rainfall, fisheries, and the electric utilities sector as well. So we began with 16 Caribbean members and we now have 22 Caribbean and Central American governments as members and two electric utility companies. So bringing membership to 24. So CRIF really operates as a development insurance company. We're more than about just selling policies. We provide products and services to countries that they're not able to or easily access through the open market and through other sources. And so CRIF is a key component in any country's disaster risk financing strategy. And the quick, the, um, the key point about CRIF is that it provides quick liquidity right after a natural disaster, allowing governments to really um, address their most pressing needs. So I'll just, I won't go through this in detail. Lizzie mentioned, you know, the great vulnerability in Latin America and Caribbean. These are just some significant um, impacts and significant years. Um, after Ivan in 2004, we all remember 2017, a few years ago, where hurricanes Irma and Maria um, caused extensive damage to 18 Caribbean countries. And um, so that was another watershed moment. In fact, three of CRIF's members joined in 2018 uh, following that devastating year because they realized the value that CRIF had to them. And of course, we all remember, well, two earthquakes now in Haiti, um, the first in 2010 and the, the other one last year, um, which were devastating. And um, CRIF was able to provide resources for them. And Yuna May spoke about climate change, and we all know in general what the impacts are, but um, to put some numbers to it, CRIF and other partners conducted a, a study of the economics of climate adaptation, looking at specific sectors, agriculture, tourism, and so on, key development sectors in the region. And it determined that in a worst case scenario, um, annual expected losses due to climate change, due to the impacts of um, storm surge and wind specifically, could result in an increase of up to 6% of GDP in the worst case scenario. And the study also looked at a cost benefit analysis of different risk mitigation actions, you know, such as installing seawalls and, and so on for each of the, there were eight pilot countries in the study and for each country looked at where it became cost beneficial to implement those disaster risk mitigation activities or where it might be more cost effective to, in, to um, invest in risk transfer. And so this study allowed you to, allowed decision makers to see some a concrete numbers that it could use to make cases to access climate funding, for example. So obviously governments realize that due to the increasing frequency and severity of these high climate related events, um, there's been a growing interest in disaster risk financing and insurance programs. So the financial protection part of the comprehensive disaster risk management frameworks is getting increasing um, attention. And so there is a range of um, 
financing instruments. Some are ex post where they are put in place only after a natural hazard event occurs. And of course, this would include donor assistance and so on. And of course, the dreaded budget reallocation where governments have to take funds from one aspect of their budget, such as social programs or education and so on, to place it to address um, disaster risk recovery efforts. And then there's increasing focus on ex ante instruments, excuse me. <clears throat> <clears throat> where investment is made up front, for example, in national reserve funds, contingent debt facilities, cat bonds, and insurance, both parametric insurance, of which CRIP is an example, and traditional insurance. So this graph really shows you when these kinds of um, instruments kick in. And it shows that CRIF insurance is able to provide relief in the very, very early stages of um, of the time frame after a natural hazard event occurs. And specifically, CRIF can make, not can make, does make payments within 14 days after a natural hazard event occurs. And so we like to share with governments that their financial um, disaster financing policies need to include a range of instruments that deal with the different levels of hazards and risk. So you go from your low risk layer, such as your local floods, where you'd expect your local funds, your contingent budgets to deal with those, all the way up to the high risk layer, which is where CRIF insurance comes in, um, dealing with high intensity earthquakes and severe um, excess rainfall uh, events, as well as hurricanes. So we really want to stress that CRIF is not a panacea, it's not a catch-all. It's an important part of a country's DRF um, strategy, but it must be accompanied by these other kinds of instruments. And just a couple examples, um, we heard about the parametric insurance pools in Mexico, and there's a similar one in Belize, specifically for their coastal zone to protect the tourism industry. These are some others here. Along with CRIF, there are two other regional risk pools, one in Africa and one in the Pacific. And um, those were modeled after the CRIF model, but have been adapted for the specific risks in those areas, in those regions. For example, the African risk capacity um, focus a, focuses a lot on drought. And just last year or this year, Jamaica was the first in the Caribbean to establish a cat bond, which will enable them to get protection against major hurricanes. And IDB's contingent credit facility is also available. They provide loans um, which are disbursed after a natural hazard event causes um, a certain level is of a certain le level of intensity previously agreed. And the Bahamas received one such loan after Dorian, and Jamaica also recently received such a loan. And this is just a note on what the CAT bond and contingent credit facilities are. Anticipating that you'll have access to this presentation, I just wanted to put in a little bit of information describing what um, what those two tools are, since they're relatively new and um, may not be familiar to persons. So I want to focus a little bit about CRIF. Um, so we are a DRF tool. We are also considered a climate change adaptation tool because it helps countries recover from natural hazard events. Of course, in CRIF's case, it's not only climate related events because we also provide coverage for earthquakes as well. Um, so basically it's designed to fill that liquidity gap between your immediate short-term emergency assistance and your long-term as development assistance for um, recovery and reconstruction. And so when a country invests in CRIF insurance, it has you know, that peace of mind as it were. So it reduces budget volatility because it allows them ac potential access to these resources so they will not have to accept um, debt relief. So unlike indemnity insurance, which we're all familiar with, CRIF's parametric 
products make payments based on the intensity of a natural hazard event. And in CRIF's case, the tropical cyclone policy would make payments based on the impacts of wind and storm surge. The earthquake policies would make um, payments based on the intensity of the earthquake measured in terms of ground shaking and the excess rainfall policy in terms of rainfall. And then these are applied to the um, exposure or the assets on the ground in a country to come up with a pre to come up with a model loss based on a pre-agreed model. And so we don't have to wait on insurance adjusters to visit the country to look at damages and do an assessment because right after a natural hazard event occurs, these the model losses can be calculated and compared with the country's policy to determine if the policy is triggered and to calculate the value of the policy. So as I mentioned, CRIF makes payments within 14 days and countries can purchase policy, uh, coverage up to 150 million US dollars per peril. So this is a list of all the members as I indicated and we have a brand new member as of this year, um, Luchilec, which is the electric utility from St. Lucia. And, and as I mentioned, three Central American members as well, they joined started joining in 2015. So these are CURVE's primary products for earthquake, tropical cyclone, excess rainfall, fisheries, and electric utilities. So the fisheries policy or the coast policy is based on losses specifically in the fisheries sector due to rain, waves, wind, and storm surge. So it's, it has two components where one operates like a tropical cyclone component and one operates um, protecting fisher folk and other persons, kind of like business interruption insurance, where due to waves and, and um, high rain, if they're unable to go to sea, for example, then they receive a payout. And what's critical is when the government receives a payout, it's automatically disseminated to all persons in the fisheries sector. And this is just a list of the payouts. We've made 58 payouts totaling $260 million throughout the, since 20, 2007. And we're looking at developing new products for agriculture, tourism, housing stock, and other things. Um, other sectors, as well as one specifically for drought. And my final slide, and I see you turned your camera on, is we're also involved in microinsurance, which is targeted at individual persons and, and enabling them to provide coverage to protect them against um, weather related events. And we've created or developed this policy called livelihood protection policy, which is being implemented in Trinidad and Tobago as one of five pilot countries and small farmers, um, day market vendors, et cetera, will be able to access this kind, this kind of insurance. <laughs>